Officers, please do not litter your neighborhood with your partially used magazines. Hi everyone, welcome to today's bonus badge cam lesson here at Active Self Protection. I'm your host, John Correa. With me as always, the host of the Ask Podcast, Mike Williver. And today's video comes to us from the eternal wellspring of videos, Houston, Texas. Mm -hmm. Today's video is brought to us by 511, the pioneering purpose-driven brand making purpose-built apparel, footwear, and gear for those who demand more of themselves for the greater good. 511 field tests, designs, builds, and optimizes their products to help their consumers prepare for life's most demanding missions so they can always be ready. I love the Defender Flex jeans. Like all their pants and shorts, they are purpose-built for comfort and give you the ability to discreetly carry all your tools with extra hidden pockets, including secondary hip pockets that are perfectly sized for your concealment needs. Visit your local 511 store today or click the link below to go to 511tactical.com for all your concealed carry clothing and gear needs. Save 20% from May 10th to 16th in-store and online as 511 celebrates everyday heroes for 511 days. The Houston PD described the call as a threat to life, which is very generic, but this guy has taken these officers on a significant chase. They did find him, try to pull him over. He chased for quite a while. It gets crazy here in just a second. You can see here on the badge cam or on the dash cam already that the car right in front has wrecked up and it's about to get real. <laughs> Get on the other side of the car! Watch out, watch out, watch out, watch out, watch out. Shots fired! Shots fired! Send EMS, I, I got hit. Fucking bitch. Hey, come here. Come here. Hurry. Tighten that tight. Tight, tight, tight. No. Wrap it around. Wrap it around. Stop. You want me to get you a towel? Yeah. Quickly. Three officers were shot in this gunfight. They all are expected to make a full recovery. If you go watch the original, the dude hold himself up back in his own house. Even left the stolen car, the carjacked car, in front of the house for officers to know that he was there. They eventually smoked him out of there, and he is facing a corner plethora of charges. 
Hey, if you haven't checked out the Ask podcast lately, why not? It is incredible. We're top 1.5% of podcasts worldwide now. We are. Uh, I tell you, I'm having a lot of fun doing it. We're, we're changing lives, John. I'm having people on the podcast talk about how their incident, how the podcast, listening to it, has helped them get through their incident, through the aftermath, which is crazy. Uh, I'm having a blast. Go check it out. All the major podcast networks. Mike, as we start with the badge cam here that's coming in, the first thing I really do want to talk about is how ridiculously disorienting it can be to, to take fully automatic fire, and yet our officer gets his gun up and in the fight. Props to him for that. If you've been around someone shooting full automatic fire, for the first time you hear it, the first couple times you hear it, it's like, what is that? But that doesn't sound like anything else. It's very distinctive. And I, fortunately for me, I've never been shot at by a full automatic weapon. And let me just say this from the beginning, John. These guys were incredibly brave. They did a phenomenal job. We just need, we're gonna learn lessons here today. So please don't think we're criticizing these guys. We want the next guy who's watching this video to learn a lesson to maybe do it better than next time. And, and probably the biggest lesson here is, you know, we talk about the number one cause of reloading is missing. And, and your first shot is almost always the best shot. So, so yes, you wanna hurry. You absolutely need to get shots on this guy fast but make sure that you get actual hits. These misses didn't do anything to this determined attacker. Yeah, if you go to any of our um, any of our firearms classes, the way John teaches uh, is was foreign to me when I first heard it. All my cop training was antithetical to what John teaches, and when I started doing it the way John teaches, which is head up, everything aligned, and and you know heads up shooting, uh, my shooting improved greatly. You know what the second biggest need for reloading is, John? Dropping your magazine in the middle of a gunfight. Yeah, dropping a magazine in the middle of a gunfight is generally speaking a bad thing. And that's exactly what we see he does here. And and probably here, I'm guessing, if you look very carefully, this looks like the officer is using kind of a race gun, in my opinion, which I don't have any problem with, mm -hmm. but probably had an extended magazine release. And that's really important for um, competition shooting because you really do need to be able to do reload quickly. For defensive gunfighting, I really recommend instead a shrouded magazine release that is very difficult to do this with because under stress, that grip might get to where this, you end up dropping a magazine portion. Or, or a paddle release for that matter. Yeah, a paddle release would be even better. I don't want to be a total shill for HK, but you know. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I, I'll say another thing about this. I, I think um, perhaps maybe some more force on force training for this officer might have prevented this if he'd been under more stress shooting, possibly. I'm on a limb here, but I think that. Uh, this was the first time this has probably happened to him. If it happened to him in training, he would have feel like that shame on him, but I tend to doubt that's what happened. I think probably he was under a lot of stress and that caused him to do to grip the gun in a different or tighter way than he would do during regular uh, range call time. And, and that can happen. So this is one of the things that this really kind of is an administrative problem. Vet your gear, vet it thoroughly. Use it in force on force evolutions if you at all can. And that yes means you might have to buy a Sims barrel or a UTM barrel for your gun or whatever, but that's very valuable so that you see that because these kinds of problems, of course, he's in the middle of a gunfight with somebody who's just ripped off a bunch of fully automatic fire at him and so this is just the worst feeling on earth. All of a sudden I have an empty gun. I think he did a darn fine job of recognizing, man, I got trouble getting out one of his spare magazines. Now here he goes, click, and then tap rack and get back in the fight. Cause he didn't think about the fact that he already had a click, drops another magazine and finally gets that one in the fight. And we do notice on this magazine that he gets the entirety of the magazine out. So, so he didn't have that problem. He adjusted his grip with that, so which again leads me to think that there was a challenge. Now, I actually really like here that he kind of recognized, shoot, I'm out of ammo on my vest, and goes and picks up his other magazine, one of the two that he dropped on the deck. I do think this maybe points to the fact that as an officer, if you've got any vest space available to you, an extra extra isn't a wrong thing for a cop to have. Absolutely not. I carried uh, three on the vest, two in my belt. I could have carried more. There, uh, Tim Grammons from Skokie, Illinois PD, carries something like 140 rounds for his pistol ammo after a shootout he had uh, here on the podcast, by the way. And I'll tell you, just backing up for a second, the fact that this guy gets shot at with fully automatic fire and his, his every part of his body is saying, get the hell out of here. Yeah, big time. He has to overcome that, get out, engage this guy. He has a technical problem in the magazine, but he works through it. I mean, despite the fact that everybody's getting the best rounds on target, the fact is this guy is part of the special pants club in my I, I, I agree with you. And I think that, again, he's thinking. He's You can tell that he's not in condition black here. He's no. still engaged in the fight. So yes, a little equipment problem. Let's not give him too much of a hard time for the equipment issue. Hard he's time. absolutely mentally engaged in the fight. And actually, I think what's coming up next 
shows me even more. So he finally is going to get the gun back and in the fight. And this guy's running away. Okay, I still need to stop this guy right now, but look how far away he is in this moment. So, so Officer Gadsden here is 25 yards from this guy. I did the measurements on Google Earth. And, and uh, this guy, you know, while you're running after somebody, almost an impossible shot. And so Officer Gadsden doesn't take that shot, which tells me he's thinking. Now, I do think, again, with a red dot on his pistol like he has, this is the custom time to stand tall and make a good shot and absolutely shoot this guy in the back. But taking it while running, I'm so glad he didn't. It's a, it's a tough shot. Dude, I know feds that, that make 50% of their shots from 25 yard line on a calm range who right. weren't amped up and weren't wearing that big shot. So, and you know who you are. And I gotta tell you, stopping, taking a moment to, to get yourself in position to get a good stable shooting platform is, is the move at this point. Uh, to try to run and gun literally at the same time is, is ill-advised, especially with the backstop that he's presented with here. Yeah, there's that time to be Murtaugh, right? And, yeah. and take that stand in that moment and really stand and get your, your hit. So he didn't hear, I have no problem with that whatsoever. Of course, they're going to pursue this guy. Now, this fight's not over yet. And uh, again, for police officers, I do think there is a need for physical fitness. That's a significant part of a police officer's job because you're gonna have to stand and deliver and get hits after these kinds of runs, which I think a private citizen probably wouldn't, but for our officers, I think that they need to. Going to come across the, the officer here in just a second. You know, as he's coming across a carjacking, guy keeps shooting at him, so he goes and finds some more cover. Okay, I think this is still good stuff. I also want to say this officer that we see here is injured. He is shot, and yet his gun is up and in the fight. And that right there is a significant amount of emotional fitness. To be able to say, oh, wait a minute, I'm shot bad enough that I'm down, and yet this guy's in the fight and endangering the public and I am going to get shots back on him. That to me is an absolute charter member of the Special Pants Brigade. We have two, we've never had two members of Special Pants Brigade in the same frame, but we do today. We absolutely do. I gotta tell you, man, this guy is my new hero. The fact that he's injured like he is and still staying in the fight, still engaged, he has decent cover. I've talked before in this space about sometimes the only cover you have, doesn't apply here necessarily. The only cover you have is a curbstone or, or a parking block or whatever. He's getting himself low, he's getting himself as small as he can, he's using the car, he's doing a great job here of staying in the fight and engaging that guy, and I commend him. And a good reminder to practice some single-handed shooting from odd positions, because this is very odd position he's gotta shoot from, and he's gotta do it single-handedly at significant distance. That's as hard a problem as exists, and, and I think he handled that pretty darn well in that particular case. Now. Again, Officer Gadsden here has a 30 yard shot. I know it looks a little bit closer than that, but when you actually measure it out, about a 30 yard shot on a guy who is carjacking with, he's, the, the last rounds he has are the rounds that are in his gun. You've got to make these count. And, and this is where having that no fail mentality that says, I know I have the skills that if grip is the master, side set the pace, trigger is the servant, I can get a hit here and I must get a hit here. And that's going to be a difficult and tall order if the first time you've done that is in an actual gunfight. And especially, let's not forget, there's a, there's a civilian, a normal human in the backstop as yeah. well. So that even that complicates this problem significantly. Uh, significantly. But this guy, as we've already seen, is a problem solver. So he's doing his best here. I'm going to cut him some slack. I'm, I'm actually going to try to give him a hard time because he's just been shot at. His partner here is shot. There's a lot going on. His adrenaline's pumping. His blood's pumping. And this is a this is a tricky shot to make with a pistol at 30 yards, without all those other factors, yeah. especially when there's another person in the frame uh, being carjacked at this very moment. So you can see he's being very deliberate here. This is not emotional, crazy shooting. Yeah, he's this is deliberate yeah. shooting, and that's what you want to do in this particular case. And we don't know which round hit the guy. Guy was shot one time. Let's think about the second officer here who comes back, actually liked it, he uses his vehicle to kind of you know, uh, uh, get his firearm out. And then though, I really like that he aggresses here. He comes in. Very different, obviously, between a, a private citizen gunfight here and a law enforcement gunfight, but that you as an officer have to have the courage to move forward towards somebody who is shooting at you. As a private citizen, quite frankly, you don't need that courage. You can get the heck out of there, but as an officer, you gotta have the courage that says, no, I'm gonna go towards this. Remember folks, courage is not the absence of fear. Courage is feeling and sensing that fear, understanding the jeopardy that you're in and pressing forward anyway and doing what you have to do, especially if you're a sworn peace officer. This is this is unfortunately part of your job. We no longer say, I hope we no longer say, the most important thing is I go home safety and my oh, no. That's not really what you signed up for. Um, and these guys I clearly know that. I'm, I can't tell you how 
Uh, proud I am of these three officers and the tremendous job they're doing here. Incredible bravery on their part. Okay, again, a little bitty nitpick here, okay? A little nitpick, he's a little close to his cover, all right? Mm -hmm. So again, work in training, work in your force on force, work on the range and backing off your cover a little bit because it will give you better cover if you do, it will give you better shooting angles if you do. And what I see the officer do here, what this cl being close to cover kind of makes him do is it makes him kind of lean over like this. Now, I also will say, once you paid the price to see what you see there, once you have stuck your face out there to see, oh, is that guy gonna shoot me? You've paid with the cost of potentially your life for that. Playing peekaboo at this point, you pay that cost again and again and again. You paid the cost, own the space, and fill him in if you see anything coming your way. That might partially, and I don't know about Houston's training, that might be a training scar, and that's kind of a trite term, but you know, it might be that they're teaching uh, from you know 25 yards of pistols, frequently uh, agencies will have you stand behind the cover of plank, basically, to act as a corner of a building, corner of a wall, right. and and they will teach you to pop out from behind it repeatedly, and then get behind cover, come out from cover. I hope we're moving away from that, like John said. And this is this is kind of a new concept. Once you once you own that space, own it. If you're out that far, you're already out that far. Uh, going back behind the car only gives a bad guy an opportunity to advance a little bit. So uh, again, a nitpick, I think. He did the best he could under the circumstances. Yeah, and, and again, uh, not to say anything bad about him at all. Also here now, this guy is going to start running. Once again, your first shot is your best shot because this officer is going to end up trying to take shots at this guy while he's running off. So we got a quartering shot away at about 30 yards. And that is, especially because this officer has an iron sighted pistol. I mean, it, it would take an incredible feat of marksmanship in order to hit this. I don't know too many that are not, you know, at a master or grandmaster level of shooting who could make that shot. And, and you, when you've got to make it, make it. But remember that first shot is going to be a better shot and an easier shot. So make the first one, take the extra tenth or two tenths to get that hit. It's not, it's easier said than done. And it's one of those things that you can, you, you practice it at the range the best you can. You practice it in force on force, but there's nothing like real life. There's nothing like knowing your life is in, in a very immediate, je immediate jeopardy because the person you're facing off against has or at least had and had demonstrated his willingness to use a full attack weapon against uniformed police officers. Yeah. And now this last officer, I, I gotta tell you when I first watched this one, Mike, as he bails out of the car and then runs off, my first thought was, dude, what is going on with right, you? Right. Because of course I didn't realize that he had been shot. Uh, recognizing that he's out of the fight because he's shot. Okay, there's plenty of other officers that are in the fight. I need to get a tourniquet on right now. Um, and, and again, when you're on the radio, make sure you're saying something that is reasonable, that, that what you need right now. And also here, okay, so he has a, a great tourniquet on him. He has a cat with him right there, that combat application tourniquet. You can see the first drops of blood. You've already watched through it. You know he is bleeding badly. That is arterial bleeding that he's got right now. And, and practice applying that cat yourself to your own arm. It is, it's not overly difficult, but you gotta have enough courage to wrap that sucker as tight as you could possibly imagine. And, and in practice, it should be so tight that you're, you know, you start seeing stars. That's how much it's, it hurts. And I'm gonna scratch this broken record even more. It's critical, it is imperative as a law enforcement officer, as a self defender to have some kind of medical gear on your person. If that had been in his trunk, he very well may have bled out in that parking lot. Yeah. And that would have been a tragedy. So. Have it staged on your person and staged correctly, please. If you dumb as officers hear me right now, go look at your windless strap on your tourniquet. And if you have a combat application tourniquet, you want that windless strap open. So then that way you don't have to futz with it while you've just put a tourniquet on yourself. Have it open already. And this is something you can practice. Uh, practice it till you can't get it wrong. Buy it for under stress is not the time to figure it out. I don't think that's the case here. I, I, he obviously knew he needed to get it tired yeah. so this guy was able to help him. Thank God. Kudos to this guy, by the way, in the yellow shirt. Yeah. And, and kudos to this private citizen. Sees an officer bleeding, steps in to help. Officer says, hey, make that tight, tight, tight. And, and I really think, again, every private citizen should know how to use a tourniquet, know how to use a first aid kit. And not just to help an officer like this, but it sure would come in handy. 100%. Listen, I don't know how often Houston PD sees these videos. I would absolutely love to have one or all three or all four, including the private citizen. You guys reach out to me, Mike at ActiveSelfProtection.com. I think it would make an excellent episode, and we've learned a lot from your actions here today. These guys were incredibly brave, John. I mean, above and beyond the call of duty. Yeah, I think exactly. there's a lot of cops that would have probably peed their pants running away. They, however, covered their ass.